Hello and welcome to Hot Issues. My name is John Hughes. My guest today is the founding president and CEO of Imani Africa Center for Policy and Education, Franklin Kujo. Welcome, sir. Happy New Year. Pleasure to see you again. Many happy thanks. I haven't seen you this year. You look we, good. We haven't met. Absolutely. Um, thank you. You look better, actually. <laughs> How um, are you these days? I could be better, really. What's um, keeping you unwell? Well, to think that is an election year and the issues are piling up. Mm -hmm. Already we had to deal with a hydra headed problem of mm -hmm. uh, delinquency within the political system. Mm -hmm. And so it looks as if it's going to multiply. Um, we have decided that we are the arbiters of this country's discordant policy making environment. Mm -hmm. It's a badge we I think it's a badge of honor we think we wear quite nicely. Right. Uh, and so what it means is that it keeps us at night. I haven't slept in the past couple of weeks mm. normally, but it's all for God and country. I see. Yeah. Is it paying off from where you sit in, in terms of the impact you want to make on the Ghanaian society, on the political landscape, on the economic front? Is it paying off really? Well, I think it's paid off for the very objectives we set for ourselves to mm. be different, to bring some fresh bearings to policy mm. analysis and policy making in this country. Mm -hmm. I think by and large, we've been boxed into camps okay. in the past 16 years that we've been running this uh, yeah. enterprise. And to the extent that the two major political parties, mm. or indeed any observer, mm. has now come to the realization mm. that we are going nowhere and that we've held our own over this uh, past decade and a half, mm. we think we have actually achieved our aim. Okay. As to whether the impacts we, we've made in mm. terms of the change in audience behavior, political Mm. Od odious behavior. <clears throat> I'm sure we are seeing multiplicity of it right. and we are getting drowned in mm. it, by the way. And I, I kind of feel that the, it's, it's become like a mutant. Okay. It's, it's uh, mutating. Mm. Uh, but we, 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 we've elected for ourselves to be here. Mm. And it's the only country, the only reasons why you find Imani principles getting involved in almost every important uh, policy issue in this mm. country mm. is because we love this country dearly. Okay. It's the only country we have. Mm. We've had the benefit of traveling extensively around the world. And we ask ourselves, people who do these things that that we marvel about when we travel mm. are not different human beings. We have What's keeping us from being able to do it? We have the men, we have the expertise, we have your kind, we have people sharing ideas and policy. Why are we not able to do it? I think I'd like to borrow the words of the Singaporean technocrats who put it to the fact that the reasons why Singapore uh, triumphs be above every other country, mm. or I mean, their peers, because mm. don't forget Singapore and Ghana right. and South Korea mm. were peers, <clears throat> is narrowed down to just meritocracy, pragmatism, and honesty, mm. which should be replacing nepotism, collusion, and corruption, mm. really. Because mm. we have all the fine ideas fine men, mm -hmm. fairly well-educated men and women in both countries. Mm -hmm. But where we departed mm -hmm. was the fact that we did not have the discipline okay. to invest in meritocracy, mm -hmm. pragmatism, and honesty, which should be replacing nepotism, corruption, and collusion. Mm -hmm. the, the, the talk about nepotism and corruption is heavy these days. Family and friends. Uh, CDD, for example, says we have lost over 9 million to corruption. The 9, billion. 9 billion to corruption. The government says that figure cannot be true. From where you sit, you think that corruption is really the biggest albatross yet over our necks? Well, without a doubt. I mean, way before CDD even came up with that figure, <coughs> continentally, some mm. of us had calculated, in fact, the AU itself corroborated that mm. Africa loses 25% of its GDP to grand theft. Mm. And by grand theft, we mean official uh, hydra-headed, deep-seated corruption, mm. not the petty corruption. Mm. Mm. So if indeed, if you wanted to add the petty corruption to it, we are losing close to 30% of our GDP. Mm. That figure may not be different from what the CDD would now have put out. Mm. So clearly speaking, corruption, however you look at it, the odious ones have a way of decapitating the growth that is expected in any country at mm. all. So it's true that corruption mm. has deleterious effect. Okay. And I think that the very insidious ones, the, mm. the ones that are akin and have the, 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 have the debilitating impact on our lives and livelihoods are the ones that are cooked, scammed, 
and in, in what we call procurement shenanigans. Mm, right. Basically, basically. And, and that's what you've been talking about with the Electoral Commission. Why are you on the neck of the Electoral Commission? You seem to have a bone to pick with them, literally. No, I don't think we have a bone to pick with them. What's your issue they, with the Electoral Commission? They actually had the bone to lick, but unfortunately they put the bone out in the public for everybody okay. to lick. But the bone was not a good bone, mm. which was the reason why everybody is now asking, why are you licking the bone that was supposedly yours? Mm. But now we realize that the bone itself is, is decrepit. Right? You say they are being secretive for well, a public institution that's supposed to be open to the well, people. Well, we'll get there. But okay. don't forget that mm. this whole conversation, and by the way, money never gets into the, we don't do vested interest analysis. Okay. The one that looks at the personalization, we mm. don't do that. We actually will wait for the debate to settle okay. and then find a niche within the debate mm. to come to the table with. So in this whole conversations about the secretive nature of the EC right. is trying to be, people have accused it of being in bed with government. Mm. They want to rig the elections. Actually, that's not the mind. Do you focus. think that the EC is in bed with government? No, we don't even want to believe, we don't think that at all. Okay. We only look at the evidence and then serve the facts. Okay. And the EC brought its own evidence to this to the to the table, right. which was to say mm -hmm. that the cost of having a new register mm -hmm. was going to be fifty six million US dollars. Absolutely. And the fact that the cost of retrofitting the existing register mm -hmm. was going to cost seventy four million dollars. That's right. We found out that that was a total lie. How did you find that out? I'm curious to learn. Well, we found out from its own tender evaluation committee's report. Mm -hmm which was dated end of January 2020, okay. that the award for the contract, the, mm. the physical, the hardware mm. itself, was going to be procured at 72 million US dollars. Okay. Now, this is without the software. Mm. Software prices, if you look at it averagely, was going to cost almost 13 million dollars. Mm -hmm. So in actual fact, the cost of buying a new software, mm. sorry, a new putting a new software electric system in place together, right? is going to be 85 million US dollars. It's not the 56 million dollars the EC claimed, and certainly not 74 million dollars to retrofit the new the old register. So you're saying the EC lied? Without a doubt. And 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 because the evidence is there, they came out with these figures. And their own evaluation mm. and eventual contract award is the fact that they are awarding a contract for hardware alone at mm. seventy-two million dollars. The company that won it is called Thales. Right. It's a French company. Now, we found out also that they claim that the cost of you know conducting a limited registration would far outweigh the a, a mass registration for a new register, mm -hmm. which is not true. But their own records mm -hmm. in 2010, limited registration cost us $10 million. Okay. In 2016, it was 2014, I think, it was mm -hmm. about $20 million. So to spend $50 million on a new register mm -hmm. with, the, with, the, with, with the narration that the limited registration exercise will cost almost $80 million, mm -hmm. another figure they threw out in the, in the early days of right. this conversation, mm -hmm. is a total lie. You, you've, so in actual you, fact, if you look at it carefully, mm -hmm. I mean, the reasons why we are saying that one, they lied, is the various issues I've referred to right, right now. But the other part of the conversation which needs to be had, which is, is obviously what would have been the alternatives. Mm. If you look at the EC's own investment plan okay. since 2011 mm. into systems and upgrading the systems, mm. which we procured from mm. the finance ministry, mm. because the finance ministry that pays them, right. we have seen consistently an upgrade and investment to the tune of $60 million. We'll, we'll talk about the alternatives. Let's talk about the right. technical committee. You have also alleged in, a, in I mean, a summary of your document, there's a 14 page document that says that the technical committee, uh, which chairman disagreed with some suggestions that were made to it was dissolved. And then it was uh, another committee was put up. And in a week, we had a new procurement thing. Let's delve you know, deeper as, into, into you know, that one. You know, as, as journalists, mm. I'd wish that you had the full facts okay. that were served you. Okay. Possibly on the EC's website. The EC's website, website is not that was functional. procured for 105 million US, 105,000 right. right. US dollars, mm. and it's not functional. The EC's website is not functional. Well, we checked uh, so there, yesterday. There you are. You so, so now I'm asking you. Well, the point I'm trying to make is that if the EC were a transparent organization, they would have put out these figures without us having to find back channels to get the technical evaluation report, okay. which they've not denied, mm. by the way, since mm. we published it, they've and, not denied. And Snog re re requested for that document through his lawyer, Martin Pebo. He was flatly denied, denied. that. Exactly, that. they did that. Did and you we, try it as well? 
Did you we try have, getting it officially? We have various channels we get that at But did you write officially to the Electoral Commission to we, say, we, give us document A, B, C, D because we want to run such, uh, such a research on you? Well, first of all, we didn't even have to write in the first place. Okay. Our first salvo on this issue put out these same figures. Mm. And they could have come out to say, well, here we are. This right. is exactly what we did. Mm. But they couldn't because they knew that the tender process was rigged. Mm. The, point, the point I'm making is that the reasons why the tender process was such a symbolic enterprise mm. is the fact that, first of all, the tender between, it was put, the initial tender process took four months. Okay. Now, our reading of the results mm. was that the first tender results did not deliver, well, their favorite company to win. Mm. So within, after the four months work was done, the EC bosses decided that they didn't like what was done mm. and decided that within a week, they'll put together a committee that took just one day to mm. evaluate a multi-million dollar contract and then decided and gave, gave a verdict. But in the course of giving the verdict, mm. they made several errors. One of them, mm. palpable error, Which is? was just the summation of the individual scores. They gave 100, the, the maximum score under technical evaluation would be 100. Mm -hmm. The maximum score under demonstration would be 20. Right. Now for the company that won Thales, mm -hmm. They gave a maximum score of uh, under technical evaluation to be 85, and then for demonstration, 13. But the sum was 104. So you're saying that essentially they now, prepared the grounds for their choice to win. Exactly. And you see, 85 plus 13 is 94. It's 98. Right. It is not 104. But if you look at the technical evaluation, I'm challenging them because the copy we have is actually mm. the certified one. They okay. should put it out. Certified by who? I mean, that's the, that's the tech, final technical evaluation right. report that we have. Signed off by the And you say the EC has not denied this? No, they've not denied it. They mm. signed off. The only explanation they gave through a PRO is that, well, there was no fraud. Mm. But we are alleging that given on the face of what had happened, mm. clearly speaking, and that's just one example of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the symbolic nature mm. and the rigging of the technical evaluation. Mm. How does 85 plus 13 give you 104? That's, that's a bloated figure. Yes, but the others that were out be that had um, 10, 10 each for, for, for demonstration. And then they have between 82, 80, and mm. I think it, it, well, 80, 82, and mm. another figure for the other three. Right. Now, if you look at it carefully, mm -hmm. and if you look at the technical backgrounds of the person who eventually chaired the one week tender process, which, which returned a verdict in just one day, mm -hmm. that person, as just a new lawyer who has no technical background in these assistance. And it's unfortunate. We maybe put out Maybe the he's name getting there. technical advice. Well, it's a she. He's not it's getting a a technical advice. You're, you're, you're sure about that? Well, you'd have thought. Well, it is... <laughs> what's not about mm -hmm. getting technical advice. The face of the evidence that we are dealing with, right. really. And so we decided to check mm -hmm. the backgrounds of those who sat on the committee. Don't forget, mm -hmm. every tender must have a competent committee to evaluate it. Absolutely. It, so if we look at the backgrounds of the people who sat on it, the reason why the chairman of the tender process had to disown his, his own form and the, 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 the final process mm. and said, well, I'm not going to be part of it. How did we know all of this? Mm. It was due to conversations, not conversations, written exchanges between okay. the EC boss mm. and, her, and her subordinates. And anyway, we have all those letters, by the way. So we saw all of this and mm. found out that, no, again, the reasons they gave for disqualifying uh, a very, uh, one of the competent, uh, what's it called, the Bidas, Bidas so. was that it was probably ridden with uh, a lot of uh, political exposure, mm. political risk, well, risk what, what exposure. What you're saying then points to a clear breach of procurement processes, including what would amount to kicking Madame Charlotte Asai out. Actually, do, this is far do, worse. Do you see do you see Jane Manson being kicked out because of these things you are alleging? It doesn't lie with my the mouth. evidence. It doesn't on, lie on the, my on mouth the face of the pink so. sheet. But if you are given, a, if you want to have a historical analysis, mm. basically, if it is due to the fact that Charlotte was kicked out because of procurement infractions, right? If you are looking at the sums involved, mm. well, this is much heftier. And if you are looking at the processes involved as mm. well, this is much more odious. Um, I'm not the one to call her out and say mm. she should resign or sh before she's kicked out. Mm. I won't do that. 
I would rather expect that people who are seized with these matters would decide whether the conduct itself is useful. It doesn't lie in my mouth. It doesn't lie in Manny's mm. mouth to say someone should be kicked out of office. We don't normally Shouldn't do the that. Electoral Commission know better? Well, demonstrably, they should know better. But every, every step of the way, they've either decided not to respect their own processes or even the mediation attempt that have been pro proposed by competent persons like Gami and Gami mm. is not even being taken. And you'd have thought that why, the EC would have set up a, a body of mm. eminent mm. people who are probably even more perplexed than the EC, than, the, than some of us who are sitting on the sidelines mm. itself. So let's get back to the issues really. I think that the matter on the cost of mm. the elections, which is where we sit, mm. including the risk factors that, okay. will, that, that attend the process itself, mm. is where exactly we want to emphasize. Okay, we'll pause here, take a break. When we return, we'll get into the alternatives, the cost for the election. We will talk about the uh, committee of eminent persons, what role they are playing really, because if all of this is happening and nobody is pulling the plugs at this point, it must really be of concern to you. This is Hot Issues. See you after the break. Welcome back to Hot Issues. My name is Johnny. He's my guest. is the founding president and CEO of Imani Africa, uh, one of our strongest policy and education think tanks, ranked one of the top 10 in Africa. And my guest is Franklin Kujo. Franklin, welcome back from the break. Before the break, we're talking about but the alternatives possibly, we're talking also about the cost of the elections and uh, other matters that will come up. Let's start from the uh, alternatives. You were talking about some alternatives. Well, well there's a reason why we talk about the alternatives. And let me just say, let me put out the figures first so that I get into the history behind right. the figures. Mm -hmm. First of all, per the analysis of the investment plan into consistent upgrading of the electoral systems, right which as of 2018, we spent $60 million, mm -hmm. right, mm -hmm. to, to, to upgrade, right. which was why we were able to do three elections apart from the 2016 one. And as recent as 2019, mm -hmm. December, mm -hmm. the only reason why we could do all of those was because we were investing in the systems. Okay. And so they became quite better. So we thought if we did the analysis carefully, mm -hmm. a pro rata analysis would have meant that if the EC only needed to fix some of the some, if they wanted to just retrofit some of the software right. and hardware that was possibly damaged, right. Right. what it meant was that they were going to spend just about $15 million to do that. Does it make sense to have a new register, actually? It doesn't really make sense economically to have a new register. Okay. But they're going to spend $15 million plus contingency, which would take us to about $17 million. Right. When all they needed to do was to spend $15 million and have a limited exercise and fix the others. The, and the, and fix the, the other. AC says the system is can obsolete I, can I learn? and it needs to be changed. That's a total lie. Why, Why is it a lie? If you look at the investment plan of the EC itself, mm -hmm. as, as, as just recently as 2018, from 2011, they spent close to $60 million in upgrading the systems every time, which is mm -hmm. why they were able to deliver biometric, biometrically verified elections mm -hmm. in 2012. Right. And the failure rate was about 33%. Mm -hmm. By the time they were delivering 2016 elections, the failure rate was about uh, 12 or 13%. Right. The last elections they delivered in December, the mm -hmm. failure rate was just at single digits, I think 5 or 7%. So it means we're going down. Which, is the, which speak to the integrity of the systems. Right. Because procuring fresh systems comes with its problems as well. Mm -hmm. So the system you've perfected over time and invested serious public money in can return an election mm -hmm. With just fifteen million dollars, if we were even buying replacing certain parts, mm -hmm. the EC claims that no, the so-called former vendors have mm -hmm. taken the source code away, right. and so they can't deal with them. A lie, because XTL was just mm -hmm. a middleman. The companies that provided the biometric equipment for the last elections mm -hmm. were Dutch companies. Right. So if we were serious on saving this money, mm -hmm. kick out. XTL has been kicked out for good reason. Go to the companies and tell them that, well, we procure this through a, a third party, but we want to come to you. And these are systems that... Does that it work easily like it that? It definitely works like that. I mean, what's the point? A whole country running an election. These guys are in business. They want business. Mm -hmm. So if you went to them and told them that the, these machines we used, they've, they, they, they've served us really well. Failure rates have reduced from double digits to single digits mm -hmm. right now. So let's get to see if we can fix certain things. 
They didn't do it. Rather, they came up with another lie. Okay. The lies they came up with was that were that the biometric verification machines and the BVD and B, B, uh, BVMs mm. that they were going to buy will cost three thousand dollars per piece, justifying the need for new ones. Because they said all these machines were completely obsolete. Is that a well? We the, checked. The easy throwing his hands up in the air in despair. But there was a motive to do that What's in order the motive? to waste taxpayer money. Mm. And I don't know if anybody would have been benefiting on the site. We'll find out that as well. But the point here is that we did the, the com cost comparator okay. of the same system they are procuring now. They claim they are procuring at three thousand mm -hmm. dollars each, with countries that have run elections, countries a bit far more corrupt than Ghana. And these are the figures. Nigeria, what are the figures? fantastically corrupt country. You know how much they spend. That, that's unfair to Nigeria. Well, the the, the Cameroon said it, and I and I'm just borrowing his words. Okay. Fantastically corrupt country. <laughs> thousand four hundred forty-four. US dollars, that's mm. 442 US dollars for, for the machines. Kenya spent 750 dollars. You tell me time timing was an issue. These were mm. all within the lower bands of 2015 there about. Right. Zimbabwe, almost a broken country, spent 2000 dollars. Take a margin of another 500 dollars for corruption. Right. They even spent 2000. DRC, a very populous country, mm. another completely godforsaken country, very corrupt, mm. spent almost $2,000 as well. What in God's name and where are you procuring these your machines that you alone are buying them at $3,000? Specifications count, don't they? What specifications? And we are telling you that well, they, well, they, you probably need things you don't, you probably are incorporating things you don't need, mm. like facial for, recognition. For example, okay. A totally, completely needless enterprise. In fact, even if you were going to do that, the existing machines have opportunity to even tweak them mm. and then get that as well. These are the things that the, the EC, EC's IT persons okay. have bamboozled us with a lot of technical jargon in order to basically waste taxpayer money. It is not true. Does it surprise you that the EC has a technical team, an IT team, and yet we would have saw some of these things? You know, and I know that Madame Jean Mesa, for example, said when she got in that she was going to ensure that they were going to do everything largely on their own. Does it surprise you that they have a team in house, but they are source most of these? What things is even there? what is even curious about that claim is that, assuming the claims were even true, okay. but their own investment plans, mm -hmm. the investments they've been making, and these are records event. You can check it for yourself from the <laughs> finance ministry. The things they submit to the finance ministry for, for, for payments. Mm -hmm. The investment plan shows that they've been investing in IT systems up until 2018 and have spent $60 million. Mm -hmm. Who were those people doing those work? Were they ghosts? They were IT people. I do not want to get into this banter with the, the, with the former EC right. as to whether the technic, the IT, there was an IT department or not. Did I'm you not find out they, they were? I, we shouldn't have to be interested in that because Why not? their own investment mm. from plans, right. they've been spending these sums and they've been delivering superb elections. That's the point we need to take out of there. Okay. How come that the IT department is so decrepit, but the EC managed elections with failure rate from 33% to 12% to 7% in the last election? Because there were contractors in there. Were they not? Whatever the point is, whether the, the point is really moot, whether okay. you had them in house or not, mm. you were spending sums judiciously to deliver these elections with 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 not ma maximum errors. Okay. How come you want to throw away machines you use as recently as December 2019? All of them mm. kaput. Every part of them is let, let, thrown let's, away. Let's look at and you want to procure mm. a system that's going to cost 150 million dollars. Throw away $60 million worth mm. of investment made so far and procure a new system that will cost $150 million. When in natural fact, mm. you should be spending just about $50 million on this election. You are saying this will cost us three times what, what, what we would have. Without a doubt. What, what, what would you expect the Committee of Eminent Persons to be saying now? The they NDC should be says seized. no new register. Let's go with some of the things you are talking about. The MPP seems to be saying, we agree with the government, let's get a new register, even though the EC boss has said the present register is credible. In fact, before the December 7 referendum, well, what do you expect the Committee of Eminent Persons to be saying to the EC I boss? I think the last thing I've heard so far is that the justification for a new register is because we do it every eight years. Right. That is mathematically maybe possible, but there's no logic in that reasoning. We are talking hard, cold facts, mm. which the EC itself brought to the table. Okay. New register will cost us 
um, what's it called? Fixing the old register costs us seventy four million dollars. The new one, if they procure new systems, fifty six million. We are saying it's a lie. But their own technical evaluation report, the okay. award that, that, is you, you, you have made said the that. point. What, what should the but eminent committee be telling the EC boss at this time? What the EC should be told in no uncertain terms that the revelation, respond to the revelations, mm. in fact, have the likes of Imani and the almost 21 CSOs, the, in fact, the CSOs are many now, have all of them come to a room. Okay. Let's have your IT people walk us through. Let's have the likes of Imani and their IT team also mm. walk us through using verifiable documents that mm. you, the EC, produce to the finance ministry mm. and using verifiable document like the technical evaluation report, which mm. obviously is a reading rotten document. Mm. And let's now compare the values and compare issues. And I, let's I, I thought the EC engaged you at the Coconut Grove Hotel. They didn't recently. invite us. They you were invited, not invited. They did not. They invited organizations that had not even raised eyebrows about the election. Would you know why you were not invited? Well, because they couldn't stand superior arguments. That's all. I mean, I would have thought that it was our doors were fairly open and we challenged them. We want them to come. You see, it's not a contest of the school The CEOs boards. Was, were represented by Mensah Thompson at the time. Asepa. Well, as, well, Asepa had the, did they have to even speak? They were not originally part of the 21, well, the 18 CSOs that we put out together. Right. What I'm saying is that well, they may have invited people, but the critical actors who were raising the issues... You were not invited. Well, we were not invited. Why not were you not invited? Did you ask questions? We didn't even have to ask. It was obvious. What would be the ripple effect if the EC still decides to go ahead with what you have called economically wrong decision of compiling a new register? Well, first of all, we are at the level of impunity right now. Mm. Impunity has taken over. And like many Ghanaians like to cheer on their political leaders who are engaging in impunity. It's like the Stockholm Syndrome, where you are happy with your captors. At mm -hmm. the point, psychologically, you are, you are in tune with your captors. That's mm -hmm. what has happened. So you still have a session of the people who say, well, what's the cost of peace? Right. Let's go spend money anyway and have mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. But there's the other risk factor. Which is? Which is the processes that the EC itself wants to undertake. EC has given a timetable of April 18th mm -hmm. to start a registration mm -hmm. process. Even the company that won in this technically rotten evaluation, okay. Thales says it will spend 85 days to assemble the materials upon winning the contract. Mm. 85 days. That's what the company right. said it will do. Mm. Now, 85 days from now is obviously beyond April. Right. So what is the <coughs> easy justification for doing that as well? In fact, the company itself says 85 days. The other company that is actually much more qualified, that was <laughs> shortchanged, by mm -hmm. the way, mm -hmm. even said they would spend five months. Okay. Smartmatic. So it's it just around the same months. period. It's around the same period. Is it too close for comfort? I think it's too close for comfort. And unless the EC is going to use the existing system that they procure to start the process, which they may not be telling us, mm -hmm. we don't see how contractual re relations that have to be struck the legal document that have to be written and signed off, and the testing and piloting mm -hmm. process mm -hmm. would go beyond April 18th. You, you are a member of the 40-member FX um, Development Committee. Mm -hmm. Number one, people in the public domain have said it was unnecessary. The committee was unnecessary. You remember. What do you say? Was it necessary that we had an FX committee to deal with the depreciating CD? I think it was so necessary to the extent that some of us would then be advising the government and the finance ministry that you can stem the tide of currency flows okay. that goes into odious pockets if you decide to take a look at this EC procurement. Okay. You can save the country almost 135 million US dollars mm. if you decided to yank off the entire procurement process and let the EC spend 50 million dollars to give us a, a register that will be fit for purpose. When you do that, okay. my duty on the committee would have been served because the reason for the committee that one of the reasons the committee was set up is to check odious currency flows. Mm. One of the, this is a candidate for that particular enterprise and my work would have been done by ex by bringing this exposure. Professor Rounds, for example, thinks that could amount to co-optation where, you know, vocal think tanks like yours or institutions that have a dissenting view and are bringing facts and figures would have their leaders co-opted so that literally the head of the snake is being cut off and you well, can't bite anymore. True. I mean, there, there's something I need to say about that. First of all, at the end of the day, 
uh, what is the essence of your shouting if you are not invited to the table to actually shout if in the, the AC the didn't invite you? Well, they did not. And the reasons why they are suffering the ripple effect. Mm. So it is important, and I see it as influence. That's mm. one. But secondly, since I've been on the committee, I think I've been too vocal. One of the reasons I, I spoke to mm. recently about the stability in the currency, which has been touted as something we should clap everybody for. Right. It's actually not the case. And I've spoken to the media and mm. said, well, while the Bank of Ghana, which is part of the committee, by the way, has done an excellent job of selling Forex forward, okay. which is a useful thing to mm. do to mm. stem the tide of, you know, all the speculation, mm. speculative behavior. The other thing that we really do know is the reason why the CD is doing appreciably well against the US. There's some magic going on. It's the, it's the coronavirus effect. Well, did you know? Sami JV said this. It was lambasted. But that's it was true. ridiculed. Anybody who studies that economic, whoever economic, thinks that the nah, coronavirus. Nah, nah. No, but that's true. If you if you look at the, the, the flow of trade carefully, mm. well, Guta people are a significant part of our trading community. Right. If a plane goes to China, we count, uh, we estimate about $300,000 that is leaving the shores of this country. Mm. All of that money is not going to China right now. In fact, Nigeria, Nigeria is, should have been the biggest that, beneficiary if that analogy holds true. What Nigeria, Nigeria is the big brother, the is the most popular. Uh, they import more. They should be the biggest beneficiary. Why would they be the beneficiary? Because they are bigger than you. They, they are importing well, more. They import more because, and, and so because this, is, this has happened, the Nigeria economy has definitely taken a hit. Even when Nigeria decided to close its borders, there was inflation. Inflation spiked. Mm. So however you look at it, the reverse order in economic analysis is to look at other deleterious effects as well. Sami Jefi is so right. Mm. In fact, it's so apparent that it is just illiteracy on mm. the part of those who do not think he's right, mm. that they don't even read the global dimensions of things. Do you well, know that stock market mm. of the U.S. lost uh, uh, one point, almost two trillion in mm. two days mm. when this happened? Mm. And this is a scare coming coming up. I think the people who are politically myopic, mm -hmm. who talk down at people who say things of this nature, should be interested in what our government is doing to help us, to save us from the coming effect of the coronavirus, rather than get into this debate about whether coronavirus is not leading to some of the stability we face in the currency. I think it's, it's, a, it's a given in a way. Beyond when, coronavirus, are we getting there? Are we? How close are we to saving our CD from the dollar and the pound and the euro? Well, you know, um, at the end of the day, it's a demand and supply issue. Mm. It is about, and again, it's a broken record saying this things anyway. It's like what the English say, it's a hiking aid expression. Feed your exporters, mm. add value to your exports, and then that way, uh, add value to your commodities and, in, and, in, and get an increase in your in, in the value of your exports. I think that is the way to go, really, okay. ultimately. Mm. Frankly, thank you very much for coming. It's always a pleasure it's been great having sitting you. with you. Thank you. And that's my guest, Mr. Franklin Kujo. He is the founding president and CEO of Imani Africa, one of our strongest think tanks on the continent of Africa, contending with others in other parts of the world. My name is John Hughes. See you some other time. Good afternoon.